Making a living and a life worth living is something we all must do. We all must learn how to put together a career and we all must learn how to socialize in a way that provides for us networking contacts. When we get those networking contacts, we're expecting them to do a variety of things. We're expecting them to explain to us what it is that they really do for a living so that we know how to articulate that to other people. We are also expecting them to understand what we do for a living so that if they do choose to pass our name along to someone, they don't say the wrong thing and they say the right thing, precisely the right thing. Because saying the wrong thing can impact someone's livelihood. It can destroy a life. We know this because of how gossip harms lives. You see, in the Bible, for those of us who like to read that particular historic work, or really any other historic literature around the globe, including Confucianism and the works that are in the Muslim face and other things, that gossip is something that is not thought of well. It's seen as something that is ill-willed. It is seen as something that is a lack of character. It is seen as something of a sharing of a soul that's not lawfully your right to share. In life, we have moments of time to make a difference for someone. We have to decide what sort of life it is we're trying to put forward. Are we trying to put forward a life of law and litigiousness, or are we trying to put forth a life of love and equity? The challenge is we really need both. That's why the current presidential campaign is so intriguing to most people, because there's a lot of candidates out there for us to really choose from, for us to have a variety of options now that we're tired of liars of the land. You see, liars of the land come here illegally. Once they get here, they realize that they lied to get in, so they can lie perhaps about other things. But where is the moral high ground? Where is the right thing to do? We have families being separated at the border, but that's not necessarily lawful in God's house. God would not want a parent separate from the child. The question is, what is the mentality of doing that? Is that the punishment for someone coming here illegally? Or is the right appropriate response to simply say, here's a bus, get on it, we'll see you later, bye-bye. Go back to your home country, make a new life, make new cities, go into the countryside, develop the land, do something in your own space your own place, your own time. The reality is we have a lot of moms who feel that this is a travesty, that they shouldn't be separating parents and children. As a dad, I would have to agree. But the reality is at some point, the parent and child does get separated. I think the real question is at what age do we separate the parent and child? Because there are some situations in life where a man has to go back to his mom's because he's lost his wife, or a woman has to go back to her father's house because she's having difficulty with her spouse. And those are times that we have to think about. We also have people who manipulate other people's property. This is a real issue. We have people who come here as liars of the land and literally think they have the right to take and partake of anything in front of them if someone is awake or asleep. You see, we seem to have people who don't agree with the fact that people have the right to be fatigued and rest in public space or in private space. There's a real problem of that here in the community I'm in that I have found that with all the walking I do, literally from two towns, from one town to the next, it takes me a half a day sometimes if I'm really fatigued, or if I have a blister on my foot, or if I'm having difficulty because of how I was wrenched by local law enforcement and really harmed in that physical situation, and it wasn't even a physical altercation. They just thought they'd pick me up and twist me around, and that was unlawful. It was unnecessary, and it harmed my body. But openly, they're big, they're large, they have guns, and what am I supposed to say? Ouch? Like that would stop them. In life, we have other people who are monsters in their minds, who feel that their life has not gone well at all, so therefore, they're going to try and take advantage of other people's lives. I've seen men commandeering the conversation of other people's time in different type of restaurants. Usually, what we try and do is do a quick networking interaction just to find out, is there an option for something to happen here? But when a man is literally sitting with his child, his daughter, and then starts to talk to another man and spends the entire time talking to that other man and ignoring his child, I think that's a real travesty on both sides. Not only is he commandeering the time frame of someone else, but he's also completely ignoring the quality time he could be having with his child, which is really his lawful right. Because the only way we produce healthy, law-abiding citizens is how by parents who spend time talking to children, establishing quality relationships with them, loving on them, raising their souls to be everything that God has put within that child's soul to become, whatever that path is, whatever that journey is, whatever that life skill is, are often called the calling of a person's soul, and then we move forward. But when we have people who want to monkey with a person's calling, who want to monkey with a person's soul, who want to interfere with that child's right to be raised in loving environments, that's a real problem. You see, we have a lot of people who are trying to 
get into the rights of other people. This is something I don't really understand and respond well to because my rights have been taken from me many times illegally, unlawfully, and irregard for my decisions for my time for the day by not only birth family members, but other people in the community. Now, in some cases, I made the choice to give up my rights to help someone, meaning I decided to let go of my day's plan to literally help someone who was in need. That was my right to do. It was my regard for God. It was my regard for that individual situation. It was my compassion in my soul. And you have the right to do that too. But when we have people who infiltrate other people's lives, wake them up when they're resting, it might be that they worked the third shift and they simply fell asleep waiting for a store to open. They don't need a police officer calling them and waking them up and saying, hey, this is what time it is. And then you find out that the police officer lied about the time. So the person runs over to do another errand, comes back and discovers that that's not exactly what the plan was for the day. Now, when I'm talking about this, I'm not disregarding the importance of law-abiding citizens, nor am I disregarding the importance of law enforcement. What I'm saying is that we seem to be gone, long days gone, from the concept of officer friendly. Now, officer friendly had two roles when I was a kid. He went into schools and he talked to children about the law. He explained to them the constitutional amendments. He explained to them about the basics of theft, that theft is wrong and theft will, liability will go someplace else. The other day when I was in the library, I was looking for another pair of glasses because mine were starting to fall apart and they were getting difficult. And I usually have a couple extra pairs on me because of how people like to pilfer in this community. I went into my bag where I expected to find the two additional sets of glasses and found them completely removed. I also found something put in my bag that was not something I ever had in that bag, nor was it something I would have ever put in my bag, nor was it something I would have ever purchased or taken from any place, ever. I couldn't even tell what it was, frankly, something ridiculous. I threw it away. I don't like the fact that I spent the night in a safe place at a shelter that I was gifted a sleeping bag to, to find that the next day when I went to go find my glasses, things were gone. Interesting enough, a woman had driven up on me during the day and tried to give me something, gift me something. And sometimes I think it's those people who are getting their guilt put on them, that they thought mon they'd monkey around for a lark with girlfriends or guy friends. And then they got home and they were alone with the Lord and they realized what they did was wrong. So they have to sort of make amends instead of just walking up and saying, hey, these came from you. I'm pretty sure you probably need these back. Here you go. You see, there's always someone who wants to put a play in motion on someone else. And it's not really lawful. It's certainly not lawful in front of God to lie about your rights in someone's life. Because God has a plan for every person's life. Every single human being has a plan for their life that the Lord has prepared. And if you're listening, you get on that plan. And once you're on that plan, you go through it. But when other people start to monkey around in God's plan for someone's life, it messes the whole system up. The Lord above has to send everybody else and their brother in his house, his angelic realm, his uh, divinity, if you will, to go and fix the problems that humans have caused. Now, if you're a person of faith, then you kind of get that concept. But it's no different in a corporation either. The president of a corporation has established rules and regulations and opportunities for people in that business. And when people don't regard other employees, other colleagues, other workers for their calling, their life's work, their sophisticated abilities, their talents, their skill sets, etc., then we have internal problems, interoffice politics, as it's often called, water cooler fodder, gossip. And gossip ruins people's opportunities. Someone might be vying for a promotion, but someone else wants to thwart that opportunity. So they do something sort of unlawful or sort of illegal or just sort of immoral to interfere with that person's right to earn more for their hard work and their energy. There are plenty of people who want to just get by in life, but I believe it's due to poor training in school, poor training at home, and poor training by companies that bring them in. You see, a life can always be turned around with the right attitudes. When I worked in manufacturing long ago as an interpreter, and that was a baptism by fire experience, I can tell you, because my Japanese training didn't provide for me all the language that I needed. So therefore, the company had to sort of provide some of that to me, and I had to do a lot of work to translate all of that. But I learned very quickly to the best of my ability, without any time to ever learn with anyone at all. But that was a submersion environment. What I'm saying is that in most places, in most businesses, in most large corporations, training programs do exist. And I guess my point is that I was called in those moments of time to go into the local schools and talk about life, real life. It was sort of a triquation that I used to talk about with life. 
that in life, if we want to have a living that's equal to or better than what our parents have provided for us, we have to work. We also have to socialize, we have to network, and we have to know people in order to get places. There's always going to be that kid who thinks they can be superior to others because of their intellect, but they fail socially because their parents don't honor the social time that's regarded. They might become a leader, a manager, or owner of a business, but they might lose employees because they don't regard what's important to people. You see, what's important to people always shifts. For some people, money is important. For other people, time with others is important. For other people, just accolades and praise is important. And that then becomes a manipulation point when other people are paying attention. They know how to manipulate those things to get relationships with those people and to get the earnings that they need, perhaps. Or they go against that to show that person that they're off track in their focus in life. Now, the problem is, who gave those people the right to give them a lesson? They really have no right to keep interfering with people's lives. They have no right to have information about their health care. They have no right to have information about a lot of things, and yet people do gossip. We share something in a trusted moment with a trusted person we think we're building a trusted friendship with, a trusted liaison, a trusted colleague, and that colleague gossips and ruins our willingness to trust them. When a person lies to another individual, for whatever reason, they think it's right. It causes a distrust. So when we have a certain villain in the world who's trying to undermine every person's human rights and dignities, we have a problem. When we allow it to continue in the next election, we then have a continuing problem. When we simply say, you know, it's time for the America to go back to the land that it's supposed to be, one of honor, dignity, and regard in the world, without the lies from a president who may or may not be lying, but that's what the muckraking does. It establishes that someone is a liar. And in presidencies, there are things that we have to have and not have. We also have a news journalism going on right now that's not the same as old-time presidents when they didn't have news every single day. You see, it's our news reports that help us to learn what's going on, but if those news reports are false, we have difficulties. So in life, we have moments of time to make all the difference in the world for people. But when we're looking at how do I help someone how do I help them go further? We simply say, it looks like you might be in a challenge right now. What is it that I could do within my own powers? Nobody else's powers, no corporate powers, no organizational powers, no city powers, no community powers that would help you to move forward in life. Then the person might say, well, I just need a few bucks to get a meal. Or they might say, you know, I really just need a place to sleep that's not going to be hazed and harassed by some law officer who doesn't allow me to sleep. Or maybe it's going to be something else, simple. Like, I really need to borrow a laptop computer from somebody so I can continue my job hunt 24-7 instead of just during the days and the hours in which the library is open. Or maybe it's, I need to really get into a job where they won't make fun of who I am or what I like to do or what I like to be or what I am in my soul. You see, we have to be willing to say, okay, I may not agree with everything that you are or you do, but I'm not going to impede what the Lord has put in your soul to become. In life, we have moments of time to make all the difference in the world for people. The only question is, how do you want to be remembered? Do you want to be remembered as a sly guy, a smart aleck, a wonderful person? Do you want to be remembered as someone who changed the life of someone? Do you want to be remembered as a villain or as a hero for people's lives? You see, the hero comes in, no matter what time of day or night it is. The hero steps up without a regard to his own fame, his own fortune, and simply says, I've heard you request for help. Let's talk about the priorities of your life right now, and let's see what I can do within my resources, my talent pool, my networking community, to help you to align yourself with the best opportunity for your life. Let's talk it through in the good, the bads, the uglies. Let's, let's do a strategic alliance or a SWOTS analysis to determine what are the strengths, the weaknesses, the opportunities, and the threats of this game plan. But in the end, it's your decision. I'm not going to vie for one thing or the other for you. I'm not going to push my ideals or my morals on you. I'm not going to force you to become something you're not really in your soul. And I'm certainly not going to interfiltrate with any loving relationships that you have in your life. Because those loving relationships are what raise people up and help the world become a better, more peaceful, loving place. Now, when I talk like this, people will like me or people won't like me. But that's your choice. Because all you have to do is shut me off. But don't shut my life off. Don't feel you have the right to tell me that I'm not who I am in my soul because the Lord makes all souls. 
And this is a program that we have to start getting into that the Lord God of all has made every single human being, regardless of whether or not they believe in him or her or not. Isn't that the fascinating point of the Bible? It says so quite clearly in many historic works around the globe that there is one monotheistic Lord in which there might be actual duality of that of the mother and father, but in truth, that that individual deity, that divine architecture that has been proven through mathematical science down to the most minuscule of proportions is literally in charge of all men and women, which literally means that the soul within that individual was created for variety in that God's life. Now, the Lord above can move people to do things, but how do you know whether or not you've been moved to do something by God or moved to do something by selfishness or moved to do something by Satan? And that's something for another day. But what I'm talking about when I say these words, people kind of get what I'm talking about. It's the good versus evil in the land. It's the Harry Potters versus the Voldemorts. It's the dark clouds versus the light clouds. Whatever your thing is, whatever your belief in faith is, whatever your understanding of how the world should work is, we hope that your belief is that all people have the right to pursue life, liberty, and happiness in America. Whatever floats their boat and doesn't sink your ship is what we used to talk about when I was in the seventh grade. That literally said, I want to support you as long as it doesn't interfere with my rights to be me. And that's where we need to get in this country that there are laws that regard us as equal citizens, regardless of our skin color, our racial backgrounds, our ethnic groups. But in the end, when we're looking at our life, regardless of all those criteria, those characteristics of who we are as an individual, are we raising people up or simply tearing people down? It's down to that simple moment of time, that in this exact moment of time, are you raising an individual up or are you tearing them down? with your thoughts and your action plans. That's it. It's the simplest thing. We used to say, what would Jesus do for those of us in the faith? For other religions, you probably say other things. Karma is a bitch, whatever. It doesn't matter. But the bottom line is that you're either a person of light and love, helping people to go further in life, or you're a person of dark and despair, trying to destroy life for others. Because when you destroy life for others, I promise you, there is a karma and God will take your lightness, and your dreams away. Thanks for listening. This is Blake Henson of Blaze Communications talking about a variety of topics from God to politics to all sorts of things under the sun. And I mean that configuratively in both ways it's meant. S-U-N and S-O-N. Thanks for listening.